Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. Doctor, if you would, please introduce yourself to the jury. Um, my name is Donald Pruitt. I'm an orthopedic hand surgeon uh, currently working for Mercy Clinic Orthopedics. Thank you, doctor. And are you one of the treating doctors, uh, in this case, that treated Jeff Crowley for the injuries he suffered in a motor vehicle crash? Yes, sir. Judge. And doctor, uh, we met briefly, but again, my name is Brent Sumner, and I represent uh, Mr. Crowley in regard to the injuries he suffered in this case. Um, I'd like to review your background, if we can, for the jury, just so they understand how you became involved in this case and a little bit about you. I'm going to show you what we have marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 7, which is a copy of your CV, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you stated earlier that you are an orthopedic surgeon, is that right? Yes. Um, and what is your specialty, sir? I specialize in surgery of the hand. Okay. And did you perform surgery on Jeff Crowley for the injuries he sustained uh, in this crash related to his elbow? Yes, I did. Okay, um, and I show just briefly, we'll go over your CV for the jury. I, I show you graduated from medical school in 1983, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I show that you received your medical degree in 1983, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, and then you did your, uh, your residency at Washington University and through Barnes Jewish Hospital, is that right? Yes. Tell us about your residency, if you would. My first year in 1983 to 1984 was a general surgery internship. Uh, we rotated through some of the general surgery programs. And then I spent a four-year program at Washington University learning orthopedic surgery. And then one more year specializing or subspecializing in surgery of the hand with Dr. Paul Mansky. Uh, and Dr. Paul Mansky is considered a world-renowned hand surgeon, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, and so besides the four years of orthopedic surgery, you did an additional year specializing in the hand, is that right? Yeah, hand and upper extremity. Okay, we and, did. and when we talk about upper extremity, we're talking about basically anything from the shoulder to the end of the hand, is that where well, we with are? With Dr. Mansky, it was up to about the elbow, Okay. and he did very little shoulder. Okay, um, and then after that, you stayed on at Washington University for a period of time, correct? Correct, I was a junior faculty member. Okay. And doctor, I show you are board certified in orthopedic surgery. Will you tell the jury what that means? Um, board certification is uh, the uh, certification that you uh, know about your orthopedics. What we do is um, they review a number of cases you do, and then you take some exams, both written and oral. And then every 10 years, uh, one needs to recertify in that. I also uh, did some subspecialty certification in uh, surgery of the hand and have recertified in that as well. And so, doctor, is 100% uh, of your practice today focused on hand surgery? Hand and upper extremity, okay. not above the shoulder, and I'd say that's 95 to 100% of it. Okay. And, doctor, we're here um, regarding your patient, Jeffrey Crowley, and he was involved in a motor vehicle crash on July 5th. 2016. Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. Okay, and we marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 8 the total access urgent care records um, from the date of the crash. And if you would, Doctor, um, please tell us about the presentment there on page 2 at total access urgent care of Mr. Crowley. Objection. Uh, these were records um, uh, indicating the patient to come in that day for a motor vehicle accident. Uh, it had been three hours before they had seen him. Uh, reported being in a collision. Um, it says with a driver who ran a red light three hours prior to the visit. Uh, was reporting pain in his left forearm, uh, denying numbness and tingling at that time. And did they do uh, x-rays of Mr. Crowley's uh, neck? and forearm uh, at the urgent care facility on the day of the crash? Uh, yes, I see records of the x-ray cervical spine and x-ray of the forearm. Okay. And doctor, I'm now going to hand you what we have marked as Exhibit 9, which is the emergency department records from Missouri Baptist. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And we show that uh, Mr. Crowley reported to Missouri Baptist ER three days after the crash. If you would tell us the date of that treatment. Uh, it says July. Objection. 
as to form? I 8th, uh, 2016, 12.02. Okay, and there on page 2, um, in the highlight section, it, it talks about the, uh, you know, comprehensive assessment, if you will, or HPI there, it's highlighted for Mr. Crowley. Um, if you would, uh, please tell the jury about the assessment. Um, it states uh, wound number one was bruising along the left forearm. And then uh, the second thing, they talk about uh, pain assessment, um, aching, general location head, reading to the neck, specifically uh, posterior, um, began suddenly three days earlier. Um, so did have pain treatment with uh, pain medication and a muscle relaxant with some effectiveness. Okay. And did the doctors at Missouri Baptist order a CT of Mr. Crowley's head because of the concussion symptoms? Yes, they did. It's a CT head, CT cervical spine. Okay. And it's in the records, but I pulled the CT of the cervical spine. If you would, doctor, what did the CT of the cervical spine show for Mr. Crowley? Objection. Um, indicates that the cervical alignment demonstrated loss of lordosis with some straightening. No fractures or a posterior element widening um, seen. And doctor, the loss of, of cervical lordosis just means that the normal curvature of the neck is out of line due to muscle spasms or, or things like that, correct? Typically it's an indication of muscle spasm. Okay. And that is something that typically is caused by a car wreck, correct? Objection. It can be caused by many different things, and that would be one potential cause. Okay. Yeah. It's the same thing. And if you would, um, Dr. In exhibit 9, uh, flip to page 6 for me. Okay. And if you would, what was the uh, final diagnosis given um, related to Mr. Crowley and his injuries there at Missouri Baptist? Same objection. Um, diagnosis was a post-concussion syndrome uh, and then acute strain of the neck muscles. And what was the final note by Dr. Joseph um, Galkowski there regarding Mr. Crowley? Same objection. Okay, he uh, had reported persistent neck pain, lower back pain, pressure behind his eyes, and intermittent visual changes. On exam, he has mild tenderness and bilateral paraspinal musculature right greater than left. No significant bony tendis, tenderness and no step off noted. Uh, he had declined plain films of the lumbar spine at that time, did have some mild diffuse tenderness in the midline and bilateral lumbar paraspinal musculature. Thank you, doctor. And we show after um, Missouri Baptist, Mr. Crowley was seen by his primary care doctor, a Dr. Uh, Robert Perez, and we've marked Dr. Perez's records as Plaintiff's Exhibit 10. Uh, is that your understanding of his course of treatment as well, doctor? Objection, Mike. I know that he had seen Dr. Perez before I saw him because of my notes. Katie came from Dr. Roberto Perez, who I've known for many years. Okay. And we show that his first follow-up visit with Dr. Perez was on 7-25-2016. Is that what you show there in front of you, doctor? Yes, sir. Okay. And at the time of that visit, uh, what was Jeff still reporting to his primary care doctor? Um, he had persisted a two-week follow-up to a concussion sustained with a motor vehicle accident 20 days ago. States his peripheral vision disturbances have resolved, still having some intermittent headaches every few days. And was he also reporting uh, lower back pain and neck pain um, at this visit on 7-25-2016? Um, he puts that down in his review of systems, yes, positive for lower back pain and right neck pain radiating to the right arm. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, what did Dr. Perez uh, suggest for Mr. Crowley? He uh, suggested referral to physical therapy. And is, is that a reasonable and, and necessary course of treatment when a patient's reporting neck and back pain? Objection, lack of Yes, that's typically what we do. Okay. And so we marked as Exhibit 11, 
the SSM uh, physical therapy records, which are quite voluminous. Um, and I'm just going to show you, Doctor. I made it easy. This is the initial visit. Uh, what is that date of the initial uh, visit at physical therapy? August 5th, 2016. And if you would, just for the jury, um, when he reported to physical therapy, uh, what were they seeing and treating him for on that August 5th, 2016 visit? Um, the diagnoses listed uh, were uh, on the spine, lower back pain, general medical, they listed concussion without loss of consciousness, subsequent encounter, and then the spine, it said cer cervicalgia. And cervicalgia is a fancy term for neck pain, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and he had quite a bit of physical therapy. We're not going to go through all of that. Um, but Mr. Crowley was eventually seen uh, by you at your office, which is Mercy Clinic Orthopedics, correct? Correct. And you provided us with your records, which we have marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 12. Yes. And is that a fair and accurate copy of your medical treatment records for Mr. Crowley? <clears throat> yes, this was a copy of what I have here in okay. the chart. And you can give me those if, since you have your chart there with you. Um, and what we marked as Exhibit 12, you provided to us and to Defense Counsel, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So I noticed in your first visit, which was 12-19-2016, uh, you identified the left lateral uh, epicondylitis tear. Did I say that right, Doctor? Yes. Um, so if, if you would, uh, explain to the jury you know, what you identified on, on your initial visit. I made note that uh, he had reported pain in his left elbow after a motor vehicle accident on July 5th of this year, and I was seeing him uh, December 19th. He had continued pain, and he'd gone through a session of physical therapy with at least 10 visits over the course of the summer. Uh, reported continued pain primarily on the left lateral epicondylar area, um, and uh, reports that the physical therapy did not help him all that much. And if you would, for the jury on the video, show us where you're talking about on the arm. Okay, it'd be the outside part right here, the area also known as tennis elbow on the um, <coughs> elbow where the extensor muscles that straighten your wrist and hand attach. Okay. Um, and it was almost a year from your first visit uh, until you did the surgery, is that right? Yes. Can I notice that's kind of the course of treatment in the medical literature. Will you explain to the jury wh why you give it so much time before opting for surgery? Many of these uh, injuries will eventually get better with more conservative treatment rather than going right to surgery. Um, and uh, my assessment was I wanted to try some things for him first, such as cortisone injections, um, prior to uh, working him up for potential surgery. Okay. Um, and so did you try these cortisone injections uh, in Jeff's elbow? before surgery? Yes, I did. Okay, will you uh, tell us how many of those did uh, Jeff have? I did two of them for him. Okay, and are these cortisone injections painful? Well, I do the best I can to uh, numb the area up with a uh, lidocaine shot first and then I place the injections. There can be some uh, pain with it, but not excessively. Um, and what is the goal? You know, for people that aren't familiar with cortisone shots, what is the goal with a treatment like that? It's to settle the uh, irritated tissues around the uh, elbow down. Um, I didn't have an exact diagnosis of what was going on inside at this time, but was assuming it was uh, degeneration of the extensor tendons. And a lot of times the injection will make the pain better so that then they can do the stretching exercises to hopefully eventually get better uh, okay. completely. And is it fair to say the injections did not work for Jeff since he did not get better? Well, the first injection worked quite well for quite a few months. Okay. Uh, and then after the pain returned, I tried a second injection, which did not work as well. And then I ended up working him up for potential surgery. Okay. And what was the date of the MRI you performed on, on Jeff's elbow? Um, date was uh, October 13th, 2017. Okay. And did the MRI identify a tear in his elbow? 
I identified advanced lateral epicondylitis with a high grade never recorded a partial thickness tearing of the uh, mixed sensor tendon attachment. Okay. And then shortly after that MRI, did you perform surgery on his elbow? Uh, yeah, I uh, looked over the MRI and uh, thought that it probably wouldn't get better without surgical treatment. <clears throat> okay, and what was the date of the surgery you performed? That was November 1st, 2017. Okay, and for your surgery, did you put Jeff under general anesthesia? Um, they uh, had the anesthesia people give him an axillary block or a block to numb the arm. That's mainly for post-operative pain control, and then they did do a general anesthetic while I did the actual surgery. Okay. Um, have you known that being put under, under general anesthesia, can that be a stressful uh, event for some patients, a source of anxiety? Sure. For some patients, it can generate extra anxiety, yes. Okay. And what are the general risks of being uh, put under using general anesthesia? Well, there's a variety of different risks, um, including adverse reactions to the medications, um, difficulty waking up from it, sometimes some post-operative lung uh, issues. Okay. And you said you used a block. Can you tell the jury what that means, what's a post-op block? Well, this was done preoperatively, and what they'll do is inject some medicine up near the shoulder to uh, anesthetize the nerves going down into the arm. Um, what the advantage of this is, is it does help them out considerably with postoperative pain, but it also uh, gets rid of a lot of the intraoperative pain for the patients, and they can run them on a much lighter dose of general anesthesia. So that's why we do it typically beforehand. And this, I assume, can be a painful surgery and a painful recovery for patients. Is that fair to say? Injection form. Um, it varies from patient to patient. Okay. Um, let me show you what we have marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 13. And Plaintiff's Exhibit 13 is a demonstrative exhibit. So it's not an exhibit of Mr. Crowley's actual surgery, but it's a demonstrative that helps you show the jury what went on during the procedure. Um, so let me ask you this, is, is Exhibit 13 kind of a fair and accurate representation of the surgery you performed on Mr. Crowley? Objection. It, it shows a number of the different things. I didn't use exactly this technique, but pretty close. Okay. Well, great. If you would, um, I'd like you to explain to the jury um, the surgery you performed, and if we can, maybe I don't okay. know, is, it, is, is that okay, that That's face fine. for you to where we can show them uh, on the video what happened? Okay, this is a typical approach to the lateral epicondyle, and incision is usually uh, made either straight or slightly curving. I usually do a slightly curving incision but on the outside of the elbow, and the typical is about uh, two to three inches long, like this. You dissect down underneath. Um, typically, the more superficial of the two muscles is not involved with this. You make a split through that so that you can open that up to get to the deeper one, which usually does ha is where you're going to find your tear. And down there you can find a variety of different things. Um, sometimes with um, uh, overuse type tears, the tendon will be rather degenerated. Uh, in this case, and I noted in the operative note, what I found was the uh, muscle and tendon unit that attached to the elbow had pulled off and uh, was in one unit. I did have some degenerated tissue around it, which I removed. I then looked at it and couldn't really get it. I did not use this large biter thing that they show here. And then I did a repair, and what I ended up doing was um, I couldn't pull this all the way back to the bone without putting it under undue tension. So I attach it to the top tendon it was not as involved with a couple sutures to attack the larger one to that and then the top tendon I put some sutures between that and the bone to repair that back down to the bone and restabilize the tendon mass and that that's the procedure I did for Mr. Crowley. And about how long is that procedure you know if you will? Well from start till when they finish and start heading to recovery room typically uh, about 90 minutes. Okay and um, how are you able to mm -hmm. determine that the crash caused this tear uh, to Mr. Crowley's tendon? 
I can't totally determine that, but I can tell you that uh, typically uh, there's two ways you can get this tennis elbow problem. One is from overuse, which is most of the patients, and they'll gradually degenerate the tendon and have a mushy type of tendon origin. The second is a traumatic type of injury that can occur, and uh, this one was suspicious for traumatic because the entire mass had pulled off uh, in one piece, and that's what I found in there as opposed to the uh, ones where the tendon is more degenerated. And you noted that in your in your op report that the tendon actually pulled off, correct? Yes, I did. And so, based upon the crash and the immediate reporting of pain in the left arm, and then the bruising three days later, uh, taking the totality of the circumstances plus the ECRB tendon b being pulled off, uh, it was your medical opinion that the crash did cause uh, this rupture in this tendon, correct? Objection form. That's what I think likely happened, yes. Thank you, doctor. Um, so let me ask you this about some of the long-term issues that you see as a doctor related to an injury uh, like Jeff suffered here. Do you see you know, long-term residual weakness, things like that? Will you tell us about that? Um, overall, I've had fairly good luck with this surgery, and I usually take a bad situation to make it better. I don't think I make it back to 100% what they initially started with. What percent uh, strength somebody recovers varies from patient to patient. Um, so I don't think I can make a blanket statement on that. I, I can say that it's usually not 100%, but also usually a lot better than what you start with. Okay. And Jeff has reported some intermittent pain. Is that usual? Not, un, un, not unusual. Okay. Um, and what about some loss of range of motion? And, and I'm not going to say it right, but he's, he has talked about he doesn't have full extension. Is that, is that common? <clears throat> Again, varies from patient to patient, but not uncommon to lose a little bit, uh, not a lot. Okay. Um, you always hear, doctor, about, about with these musculoskeletal injuries, people reporting, you know, that they feel the weather and changes like that after surgery. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I don't have scientific evidence to say that you can predict the weather mm -hmm. after uh, these type of musculoskeletal injuries, but uh, many patients do often note that they can feel the cold or rainy days a little bit more. All right, and um, I noticed, doctor, in the medical literature that it says, you know, 80% of people that have had this surgery, you know, experience the same uh, surgery as Jeff, do quite well in their recovery, but there's about 20% that don't do well. Is that fairly accurate as far as the medical literature is current concerned? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, doctor, I have all the opinions uh, you've given today been based upon a reasonable degree of medical certainty given your background? Yes, sir. I don't have anything further, doctor. <clears throat> doctor, 